Hello. Hi, sorry, <laughs> I couldn't get my mic to unmute. Really? Um, <clears throat> I worked, I moderated for Jody yesterday. Okay. And um, she's, she wants to do um, breakout rooms in this session. And so I said, uh, you know, I, I would come and help her if, uh, if she needs some tech support in the okay. breakout room area. Um, so uh, unless you're prepared to do that part. Oh, I can. But did you want to moderate the session then? Because that's totally fine. No. Okay. No, I do not want okay. to just checking, just checking. <laughs> No problem. Yeah. So just, you know, if you run into some issues around the breakout rooms, just make me co-host and then I can. But you don't have to do that now. I can, I can do that right now. We can have a couple. Co you, you can be co-host as well. Oh, there go. gee. <laughs> lucky you lucky you ellen yeah okay just see what i'll say to introduce so this is jody right yeah I'm surprised she's not here yet because yesterday she came really early. <laughs> oh, okay. The last session's just finished up, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the last one I did just finished at 1116, so I would imagine. Next couple of minutes. I'm going to go off video here. I'm going to run to the washroom. See you in a minute. Okay.
Hi, Jody. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, I'm having such computer stuff. Um, oh, no. No, it's okay. Let's hope it works out. Um, I'm going to see how slow, I don't know. Anyway, look, let's just hope. I'm going to share my screen right away, get it going. Great. Um, um, so who is my absolute help with the breakout room? Jenny, it is? Or well, so I'm the moderator of this room, but Ellen's here available as well. And Ellen right. is also a co-host. So both of either of us can. Okay, wonderful. Thank you both. And uh, yes, so I'm doing breakout rooms for the, for the first time. I did learn about them, but I would really appreciate not doing the pressing myself. I'd rather, you know, read the chat. If something comes up in the chat that you're like, wow, is that ever interesting? Please interrupt me. Jody. this is really interesting, you know, and, uh, and then I'll get really mad. And no, I'm just kidding. And, <laughs> and then I'll, and then I could hear that because, um, you know, look, I don't teach online. Um, all the time and uh, or I just do workshops so I'm not as experienced as everybody uh, you know like I was just in Tomiko's uh, session and it was incredible and uh, obviously she's teaching online because she's uh, very uh, skilled so so Jody for your breakout rooms are you going to want to select people to go into those rooms or are you going to give them choice no I'd say let's just uh, um, a, a random um okay random, random thingy okay and how because many rooms are you going to want let's see how many people are here okay. uh we would want you know uh, groups of four people okay. three to five people in a, in a group four is nice because you can really see it nicely on your screen okay um and play from start. Okay, I'm going to just get it going so it's ready to go. You know, I, tur I turned off my computer, turned it back on, it took so long. Anyway, look. There it is. Uh, you no, know, yesterday's session was on mindfulness and how to calm down. So I have to just relax right now. Yep, yeah, it'll and all work out, Jody. So three to five people sounds good. So what I'm gonna ask of you though, is you to let me know what type of rooms you would like created. So I will need to know how long you want them in there and then we'll make a decision if we want one, two, three, four, whatever, whatever's best based on who's here. Okay, and uh, I would think, uh, yeah, some of them, like I'm only doing a couple of those and I'm doing polls as well. So let's hope it works. Right. I mean, I, I think I tried it out. I've never done that before. <laughs> I'm such a newbie. I mean, I figure love, it out. You know, look, we're just just doing it, doing our best here, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, we'll wait till I, I can't see how many. I don't know why I can't see the amount of people. I guess because I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, we have eight participants oh. right now. Okay. Um, so we do have a few in here. Okay. Well, hello everyone, and. Um, I'm um, just waiting a minute to start, even though it's 11.30 on the dot. Because um, uh, if people are like me, they, they took a little time to get into the last session. So, uh, you know, it's so easy to show up late uh, on Zoom, right? And, and to slip out, right? The ghosting, it's like you just slip out. Like, Nobody knows, mm -hmm. <laughs> less accountability. Uh, yeah, I'll start in a minute. Let me have uh, nine here, including, I guess, the three of us. So, you know, that's fine. Yeah. We'll have a good so conversation. We have, we have nine people. Do you want to maybe give another two or three minutes and then I'll introduce you? Sure. Okay. Sure. Just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Because I think uh, around 30 people signed up, but we know how this thing goes. You know, you get it. Also, I'm sure some of the sessions go over time because people are involved in, you know, in, engaged in conversation. So I totally. think we do have to allow for that a bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, which is wonderful because they're such lively sessions and it's a real opportunity for people to engage with each other. That's uh, something that just doesn't happen anymore, right? We don't have staff rooms. We don't have adults, even sometimes, you know, just adult engagement. 
if you're teaching yeah is exactly. really not is 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 yeah so people once they're connecting they're like i don't want to stop yes i get it how has the event been going great have you been able to attend any of the sessions i guess the yeah. last one you said yeah, the last one was great. And then um, yesterday I, I attended some, some great stuff. And I really, of course, enjoyed George yesterday. And I enjoyed mm -hmm. the, and Jen today was amazing. Was Is it that Jen? Name? Yeah, it was yeah. Jen Giffen, yeah. yeah. I took Super so many engaging. Notes. Yeah, I took so many notes. Like I'm going to try things next year because I have this big position with this school. And so I was like, oh, taking, I just got so much uh, so many resources that I'm going to try with the school. Uh, it's so exciting to bring in tech, not just as, or social media, not just as something to be afraid of, uh, but as something to really use to connect truly. So I really appreciated that. Okay. okay. I think I will uh, get going because, you know, I have a pretty, you know, I have my presentation. Sounds good. And then if people Sounds pop good. in late, not a problem. Okie dokie. All right, so hello everybody and welcome to this session. I am pleased to introduce Jody Dirksen to the 2021 BC Digital Learning Symposium. We are looking forward to learning from you today and through this presentation on diversity, equity, and inclusion in the online classroom. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Ellen, for your uh, tech support and encouragement. Um, and thanks everyone for being here. I'd like to acknowledge and honor the fact that I'm presenting from Vancouver, BC, the land of the Coast Salish peoples, the Squamish, the Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam nations. My name is Jody, and I go by the pronouns she and her. And today, as I was saying, I spread my, my, my zings, my Zoom wings with pools and breakout rooms and yes, much appreciated assistance. Um, now, it can be quite challenging to face racism, discrimination, and hatred in the classroom, bringing up potentially contentious topics like why we hate or stereotype or unconscious biases we all hold with students. You know, it can seem daunting, and with adults, it can seem daunting. At times, after a racist incident occurs, we feel driven to tackle these topics, but we don't always know where to begin. So first of all, I want to see who's in the room at the moment. Um, you know, I'd like us to start on this poll because we're going to be doing some more polls. So if you don't mind, use your phone for this or, you know, uh, because that's how I'm doing it via text. And let's just fingers crossed hope that this works. So let's see who's here. I know it'll take a moment, but once you're in, then we'll be able to just use this for the rest of the polls. And I'm sure you're all experienced with this. And if it doesn't, if stuff doesn't um, pop up, then that means it's not working. <laughs> so we'll see. Jenny, did you put it in yet? Yeah? So let's see. Please work. I wonder if I have to do anything on my end. Okay, feel free to talk, uh, Jenny. What do you think? Did you you did you want us to be texting or do you want uh, the poll yeah. in this room? Text okay, it. okay. So I did yeah. just so text you. Text fast, Mick. To so let's see, is it going to work? It's so funny that like I'm presenting to tech experts, the teachers, and yet. This isn't working. I could still go on with the presentation though, because it seems like, let's hope the next one works. And I really, ugh, look, roll with it, man, roll with it. This is why we do mindfulness in the morning so we could calm down. Okay, here we go. What is the part that isn't okay. working, Jody? That it's not showing up. I think it should show up. Because I did it and I got a message back from Poll Everywhere saying I was part of it but it didn't okay, ask so me a question. So then I just sent E. So you yes. should then get that. Okay, it's not. So let's just move on because maybe the next one will work. And thanks, Paul, for letting okay. me know. I believe okay. the reason why is because um, you put up a PowerPoint, which would not be 
like virtual, right? So we're not actually connected to the site. Yeah, but the PowerPoint is, that's how you do it through uh, poll everywhere. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go on and if the polls don't work, uh, it doesn't matter to me, it's my first time anyway. Okay, so one of the questions is, and you know, we might think based on particularly what's been going on since Black Lives Matter and since human rights, um, you know, um, um, you know, um, demonstrations and Martin Luther King Jr., et cetera, you know, is hate on the rise lately? Or do we just know about it more due to the internet? Are we too sensitive? Are we jumping on the social justice bandwagon, virtue signaling, because it feels good? Are we merely performative yet not active allies? So many questions and conversations about this topic, yet can we have a discussion where we're, we're becoming less and less resilient when it comes to having honest and nuanced conversations? Cancel culture is making it super challenging to even bring up an alternate viewpoint or a question. So many students feel so uncomfortable saying, but well, wait a minute, aren't Jews, you know, more wealthy? You know, and I do not mind as a Jewish person when anyone asks me anything, I, I, I am not afraid of the questions and I do not shame uh, the kids, you know, and our adults who ask me questions. Um, this is where we have to really welcome, welcome these questions and conversations into our classrooms. Even university professors are finding it hard to uh, have nuanced conversations. And this is scary in a world where we want to promote critical thinking and we want to open ourselves up to, um, to uh, alternate viewpoints and conversations that make us uncomfortable. Now, a lot of what I'm gonna be sharing today comes from Voices Into Action, which is, and I'm gonna just share this little video, which has no sound right now, but it does on the site, which students see when they go onto the site. And I love it because it's so inspirational. So Voices Into Action is a free online human rights teaching resource. It's award-winning and there are, uh, there, it, it covers so many topics that you're teaching within, not just social justice, but social studies, English, et cetera. And, um, and it, you will absolutely find great use in it. And the great thing is that it is free. Now, um, we, uh, so many of you have tried and failed or tried an inspired productive dialogue to actually help students change a bit and thus be more open to dialogue and varying viewpoints. Um, that's the way of an engaging and socially conscious classroom. So I'd like to be hearing from you and we're gonna be hearing from you later what's worked, what has absolutely not worked and we'll learn from each other. And this is the place to do it. So I'd really like to get to learning from you instead of just presenting as I always end up doing, losing time, you know, and then just not having a chance to, to learn from you. So I really wanna to get to that. Um, considering un unconscious bias as well, unconscious, how do we, or can we bring these biases to the surface? Because it's only through recognizing that we even hold such biases, every single one of us, that we can question them, reframe them, and thus reduce their influence on our words, our actions, our perceptions, our judgments. But we do have blind spots when it comes to um, when it comes to judging people. And this is one of the, uh, in one of our chapters, the, we always have questions that we ask at the beginning of each chapter to students and to the adults, let's be clear, that um, challenges them. So why do we have blind spots when it comes to judging people? How do these harden into stereotypes? And why do prejudices turn into discrimination, which turns into things like, we're hearing so much about systemic racism, which is really racist policy. And how do we even recognize the racist policy if we don't recognize our own unconscious biases and um, how we're more, how we, what we call normal might actually be biased and racist, right? So um, if you still are on that, see if you, I wonder, maybe it won't even work now. Why do we have line spots when it comes to judging people? How do I get you to do this? Maybe what I'll do is, because I just don't think it's going to work. Because how could it right now? And I spent all the time doing it. Let's see if it'll work there. No, it won't. Okay, so if you don't mind everybody, 
if you could, can people just unmute themselves and just say out loud right now, why do you think we have blind spots when it comes to judging people or you can share some stuff in the chat. I'm gonna to go to the chat and see what people say. And um, so, and Tamiko, thank you for saying good for you, trying something new, but apparently it's not working. So whatever. If I can uh, help you, Jody, in, yeah, in the, web, the web interface says that um, web voting has not been turned on for this poll. So I think you need to go into oh. poll EV and actually turn it on at the start of your session. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay, I thought it was, I know, wouldn't it have been great? I just feel now, Paul, that I'm under pressure with the time yeah. concern. And I guess I would just prefer at the moment, because I thought that it was already turned on. So I'm just going to go on with this. So what Chelsea says, we have limited awareness of our thoughts and perceptions. It's true. Uh, so much of what is what pops into our head is standing, coming from a place of unconsciousness, of uh, you know that we can't tap into unless we take the time to do it uh, learned ideas from our past from our family of origin right like the things my grandfather would say it's so racist and and you know you just ingest that as a child and you kind of think that that's normal a normal way of perceiving your world what are other ideas from anybody uh here that might pop in uh who pop into your mind right now where do why do we have blind spots People are afraid to discuss the, these issues openly now for fear of saying something wrong. It's so true. Cancel culture. People going, do you know, like when I was teaching um, English to a group of kids and I, and I say, uh, oh yeah, you know, well, you know, in Chinese culture, and they go, miss, that's so racist. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Saying the word Chinese is not racist. Come on. You could say the word Jew to me. You could say something about Jewish people to me. I'm not going to consider you racist. I'm going to consider it uh, curious, right? So people are afraid, right? Uh, and if you don't discuss them, especially kids, you can't learn. Yeah. So we need to just say, hey, when I was young, I always thought that black people, blah, blah, blah. Boy, was I wrong when I learned this. Who cares? We're, we, but we have to bring it up and we have to bring it up in a way where we say to kids, um, I'm going to make mistakes. Please, if I make a mistake, please correct me. We are all works in progress. We are all learning and we're going to make mistakes. But the only way we learn is by conversing and by opening ourselves up to even criticism, right? We are in our own bubbles, Tamiko, exactly. And may have only connection to people who are the same race. Exactly. Like, I hate, I hate to say it, but I grew up with only Jewish friends. How limiting. I thought I was so worldly and so in the know and so, you know, so open. Yet all my friends were Jewish and it was only when I moved to Vancouver that I, I, I grew, I have more and more and more friends and realized at the ripe age of 23 at that point, how, how uh, sheltered I was, you know, and the messages I was being told by, by my um, community, which is, you know, which my community doesn't even like to bring up and I bring it up. So there you go. Now, um, we have, you know, we come up with as humans, we come up with concepts. If you look at this image, there's a concept here, right? And there's a, there's a, a, a judgment and there's a, an idea being communicated. So um, in voice into action, you know, we present the idea of concepts. We usually make sense of things by organizing ideas and information we get through our senses into concepts, mental constructs or categories that humans represent through words or phrases that give the group information a label. Concepts are abstractions and represent reality, but individual examples of concepts do exist. Organizing our experiences into concept groupings makes it easier to deal with them. And let's face it, we feel like we understand our world better if we just categorize, but it's limiting. And while concepts are a part of all our natural world, how do we search for meaning can, and, you know, and how we search for meaning, like organizing smells or colors or sounds or categorizations of animals, etc., cetera, they can get us into trouble when we uh, organize people into categories and limit people in this way. 
and our perceptions are not based on reality if they're hard and they can be hard, harmful to others and to ourselves. So we need to change them. We need to, um, we need to change them. We need to question them before they harden into judgments and worse discrimination. Now, as uh, Tamiko, you know, mentioned, uh, we are uh, we are in echo chambers, as we know. We are in uh, we are we have limited exposure, selective exposure, and our own opinions being you know just bounced back right at us. It makes us feel so good to know everyone's in agreement with me. But once again, we're not being confronted with a divergent opinion. In fact, when we are, we are intolerant. We unfriend. We don't want to have these conversations. They make us uncomfortable. And how do we how do we impact what students are exposed to? How do we open up awareness about the media that appears before them? And Tamiko's presentation was so amazing in giving amazing ideas on how in her own presentations, how to make sure that there are people of color, make sure that you're not stereo uh, providing just stereotypical images because sometimes when we do it, we don't even realize. Sometimes when we present to a class, we don't even realize we're saying, uh, okay, boys, and the way we talk to the boys is different than the girls. The questions we're asking the boys, different than the girls. Notice how when you look at a little boy, you say, look how strong and powerful you are. When you look at a little girl, you say, look how pretty and beautiful. And it, oh, now that I see it and I notice it within myself, I've stopped myself from doing it and now I'm really aware of it in others. And I go, wow, is that damaging to think that all we need is beauty as girls. So selective exposure. And the question is, you know, like, like judgments are more easily made than change once our minds are made up because we don't wanna be uncomfortable. We don't wanna be wrong, right? So when have you changed a judgment? And, um, that you held about a group you consider to be the other. And what led you to change your mind? And now, yes, people, yes, it's happening. We are going to break out into, um, into rooms. We have 16 people here. Let's go with uh, in fours, okay? And, um, and then have a conversation for five minutes. And so the question is, when have you changed? And let's be vulnerable with each other. Let's know that what's said here, and this is important, is not shared outside of the space. That this is the time we only tell our own stories here. We only share our own stories outside of the space. And I'm saying this to model what we would say to students. And I always say to students because I was a drama teacher and I had check-in and everybody shared really personal stuff. And I would say, we, all take a pledge and I would have them raise their hand. We only share our own stories outside of this room. Okay. And so that's what, we, that's what we're com committing to here. So let's get into our rooms for five minutes and then I cannot wait to get back. And then I will have one person from each room when you come back, speak to us about what, what the discussion was so we could all really um, learn from one another uh, today. So uh, let's jump away. Okay, so I'm going to create four breakout rooms and we're going to be automatically assigned to them. So we'll see you back all together in about five minutes. Thank you.
And we are back. <laughs> okay. But the question is, where is my PowerPoint now? Okay, I'm going to share a screen again. Share a screen. Yeah, you have to reload it after uh, after we've gone to breakout rooms. I see. Okay, share. There we go. Okay, yeah. Now, I think everybody, this might work, okay? So let's see if the next slide, what is happening? I hope nobody's getting stressed with my stress because that is the last thing I want for anyone. I see, uh, okay, what happened? Seriously, come on, because it's a video. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back, hold on to that same question. Is it supposed to be? Okay, now I'll just, since it's not working, I will just ask, can, can, um, if you'd like to, can we just let people unmute themselves without us needing to, you know, give everyone, we don't have to give permission. Can, um, I'm going to tell you that I heard um, from the person I was with that uh, she heard in grade 10 from a friend, hey, who was pretty brave, stop saying that's so gay. It really hurts people's feelings. And it was, and then she stopped immediately because she had never thought about that. So if you can, um, can you just pipe in with something that happened that you learned in your conversation? Whoever was decided they'd be the spokesperson. We, in, in our group, we talked about um, uh, two things. We talked about mental health and how uh, we have some some fear and avoidance, uh, like it's a can of worms we're afraid to open. So uh, then I maybe actually partly because of the way things have been going for everybody this year, it's been a much more present, observed, shared experience um, and learning about uh, resources we have, people we can go to, um, people we can refer students to if something's too much for us. Um, so I guess basically being given tools to deal with the like stereotype or the or the challenge has helped people to move beyond their fear of it and avoidance of it. Um, and then the other one that we had was um, perspectives about wealthy people who have a lot of money. Um, uh, Jewish wasn't mentioned whether people were Jewish with a lot of money. I'm sorry, I know that's a, that's a stereotype you brought up earlier, but this idea that um, uh, people who have a lot of money are somehow bad or got it by doing bad things or somehow depriving others of, of money by having money. Um, and uh, Lisa shared about how she had a, a friend with that had incredible wealth and then um, as she got to know that friend and got to understand that she's a person too, and she has a hardship too, and um, the money is just a just a fact of her birth, um, but that doesn't make her any less human. Um, helped her to move past that. So I guess that's a matter of exposure and um, taking time to get to know people as individuals. And we have to recognize where those kinds of uh, judgments come from because it comes from envy, from sour grapes, from wanting. And also if you put negative energy onto money, that's really silly uh, because why wouldn't you want it? Yeah. Uh, not that you have to be wealthy, but it's nice to be comfortable and it's nice to give away money. It's fantastic actually. Uh, so think about, and, and also I worked in very affluent areas in inner city and I could tell you that all the kids have the same exact issues regardless. And, and to think that, oh, well, they have no problems because that's ridiculous. You still have to deal with health issues and you still have to deal with mental health issues and, and self-esteem and money does not bring self-esteem. That's for certain. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Anybody else want to pipe in right now? I still have to go on with my presentation, um, but I would really like to hear from you. So I'd like to hear your main points that, that came up that was of interest of what helped you change uh, a judgment? I'll I'll share from our group. I was in uh, breakout session group two. Uh, we had a couple of um, groups that we talked about. Uh, one was uh, uh, grouping the elders and teenagers um, on how, you know, the elders are, might be going through different things and they're, you know, they're not all going through Alzheimer's and they're not all whatever. 
Um, and the one I shared was about my, because I'm elementary trained teacher, um, took a job six years ago to work in a high school. And I didn't know what I was doing and why I was doing it. And I was quite terrified to work with teenagers. And it turns out that they're actually quite wonderful. Um, and then the other um, discussion that came up was around Indian residential school. And, and uh, just to put a little bit more perspective on, on that is I'm a survivor of the Indian day school and working with working with our Aboriginal youth. And that's one of the reasons that I work in a high school right now. We have 300 Aboriginal students in a school where I work. Um, and I'm the, you know, when I started six years ago, I was the only staff person of color in that, in the school. There's more now and it's, things are changing, but I just wanted to add that piece of what we talked about. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. That, that I love this. I love the engagement and I love your sharing. Thank you. Uh, anyone else wish to share? Okay, I'm going to move on. All right. Uh, we all want to feel, uh, you know, in control of our lives, as we know, in control of others, and even in control of others, even though it's impossible. We want to feel powerful. So this brings us to, um, you know, the idea of kind of white supremacy and, and talking about that. And I just wanted you to, in our resource, we have many, many videos. And, you know, like I said, um, like I learned in, in, in my little breakout room, you know, um, when we could feel for others, we could change. And that we have to reach kids' hearts. We could teach them all, everything but we have to reach their hearts. And the greatest way is through people's stories and through their narratives and real life stories. So let's just watch. Uh, we have 40 videos with real life testimonials of people who have gone through everything from the Holocaust, residential school system, et cetera. And so I just wanted to play uh, a little bit of this so that you could, this is a black youth group discussion. And, um, and I want you to just uh, hear what, to see the, the idea of what we this is in voice and action. Oh, this one. isn't. Well, then that is not that. If you would think that I'd never presented before based on the way I'm doing, like, seriously, this is hilarious. Okay, I don't think it's going to work. Hold on. Whoops, I know why. Please, everybody, don't, don't judge me. The very first question tonight is what is racism? Well, my understanding of racism is having hate or dislike to a certain group or to a person because of their ethnicity or because of their race. It's taking shots at you because of your background, the way you look, the way you speak. Racism is a form of hate, uh, maybe even sometimes mixed with a little bit of jealousy and uh, a little bit of being envious and wanting to be more supreme than uh, Okay, so I wanted to stop there because the, the videos are around uh, four to eight minutes long and, and we have them in every single chapter. So you could really uh, learn uh, from people themselves because who could negate somebody's experience? You know, somebody's feeling something, you feel for them. You see uh, someone your age and you go, wow, I never thought of that. You know, particularly if you're in a community where there aren't many people of color. And then you're just, you're, you're basing your experience of black people based on, uh, media and based on what's out there and stereotypes and and all of that so it's it, you know it's wonderful to open our minds to this and I like what he said about feeling more supreme so that really brought me to you know the white supremacy uh, and how um, when we look at Canadian culture and and the fact that really we're we're a colonialist you know um, nation uh, you know, with uh, white people from Europe coming here and being given land while Asians came here, made to work, and then not given land. In fact, even worse, then you realize what supremacy is and the damage it does and how it would make people feel. So uh, just a little... Uh, in, in the notes for this session, which you can go to, you know, on the site, um, there's an invite to an event I'm doing, which is going to be a lot more uh, um, 
a lot more, a lot more better uh, at teaching English. Then this presentation, uh, it's going to be a lot more streamlined. Anyways, it's for Asian Heritage Month, which is in May. And I have a panelist and I like to, I had one for Black History Month because I like to speak to the people of that culture to learn about things that we never, we don't know about. And I like to learn from people and get their conversations going. So that's going to be next Thursday at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. It's free, of course. So please um, uh, feel free to sign up if you want more information, of course. And, and if you can't find it in the notes, then just email me or text me. Okay, here we go. So I wanted to show you the next uh, video, which is um, from a survivor of uh, Japanese internment camps, which is just horrid. So I want you to, I'm gonna stop at a certain point again, because there's a point to it based on my discussion with the women who are on the panel next week, where I really realized, God, that's their experience in Canada. And I just never, if you don't have an experience of feeling unwelcome, you don't know it until you hear it and you go, wow, is that ever wrong? So I'm gonna play this for you right now. In 1941, the Canadian government gathered all the Japanese Canadians because at the start of the war, they, the government thought that the Japanese Canadians would be a threat to Canada. They confiscated all the properties they owned and uh, they sent us to internment camps in Canada. I was taken to camp when I was about eight years old. It was very, very harsh. I felt that why are we being sent to the camps when we were born and raised in Vancouver and we had Canadian citizenship? So that is the one thing that I learned was uh, you could be born in Canada with Canadian citizenship and be treated this way. And of course, as we know, like the indigenous, not only born, but we're here first. So this is what the kind of uh, information we need to learn about. We need to hear from people who have experienced uh, these, uh, these, 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 this racism, discrimination, this absolute horrid, horrid treatment. Uh, to feel and then hopefully change and and watch ourselves moving forward. The next thing I'm going to show you is another group discussion on Islamophobia. And again, just a short part of it. What is Islamophobia? Uh, what that term represents is a fear of Muslims, a fear of Islam, and that can take many parts. I think at the core is prejudice, uh, discrimination. It's usually frustrating because Muslims aren't really portrayed as positive in a positive image um, and Muslim women especially are shown to be uneducated, oppressed, stuck in their homes, which is not true. The media has a huge impact. For example, males, they'll show that most likely they're terrorists or they have some kind of association with terror, terrorist background, nothing to do with Islam. There's over two billion Muslims and what they represent on the media is mostly like the extremists misrepresenting the, the greater mass of people. Have you experienced Islamophobia, racism, prejudice in school, high school, or university? Um, I have had negative experience in school when a teacher put down my faith in front of the whole class. And at one point she actually said that all Muslims are terrorists. And I found that quite offensive. Okay, so obviously we're not going to make that mistake and we're a lot more woke, you know, than that. But, you know, I will tell you that a lot of things happen uh, like this within the, within the school, within the classroom, that, that um, within even, you know, the parent committees, whatever, that, that people are just not aware of. So we have to be aware and then we have to find a way to talk about it. So, uh, you know, hate does bond us, it circulates more. So we've got to watch the negativity and our propensity to be attracted to hate, to be attracted to people who have negative viewpoints about uh, various groups. We've got to really watch and we've got to listen to our students and we've got to just notice it and then say, hey, uh, so where'd, where, where'd you, where did that belief come from? And try not to really make them feel bad. Just go, hey man, we're all learning, but let's discuss it and let's see where that came from and let's know if it's true or not, or if it's limited.
And so we have to be courageous and, uh, and, and bring it up with our students, even if it's going to make them upset and do it in a way, sometimes you have to do it, you know, outside of school and you have to do it one-on-one -on -one and say, where'd that come from? And would you be willing and teach them about it? And then say, would you be willing to talk to the other students about it? Maybe something like that could really open kids' minds to their own, um, um, you know, kind of misguided beliefs, right? So this is the first human right. When you look at it, you go, oh, well, of course. But are we honoring it? You know? Now, uh, because I don't have that much time, I'm just going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to ask you all for one to really make sure that you uh, use voicesintoaction.ca. It's free, it, all, it always will be, and it's bilingual, okay? It is award-winning, you will see. I showed you a little bit from it, but more than anything right now, I'd like to stop my share of my screen, and I would like to just go into gallery view. And if you don't mind, can we just talk about this a little bit for the next little while? If we go over for a minute or two, maybe that'll be okay. But can we just have a conversation about, um, you know, what, uh, how have you brought up these kind of topics with your students? If you have, what have you faced racism wise in the classroom or within your own even school? And, and what, what, what has worked for you? with your students. Uh, I know that resource, resources like this, Voice and Action, guide you into the topic in a way that you don't have to plan it too much, honestly. You could just use the resource, each little part, and then just safely uh, delve into these topics, which can be very inflammatory, but they're safe using a resource like this, but maybe some of you have some other experiences. So can we, can we talk, can we talk? And, and we could just please just unmute yourself and just say what you're thinking or a question you want to ask, anything. Rick, I was I, just reading your, your comment in the chat oh. and I wonder, did you feel like you had a chance to address that in a way that the students were brought beyond what happened? Um, and I don't know, other, other thoughts on dealing with a situation like that and helping people to move forward in their thinking? Well, uh, I usually um, I'm in there for a time frame, like 40 minute lesson and um, bringing up, I, I respond to as um, yes, <laughs> is what I say. And I don't, I don't try to, I don't feel it's in my place to become the educator for all educators on their biases and racism, because uh, that's that's a continuing full-time job for a lot of people. If we did do that, and people need to come to their own bias, uh, biases and realizations of them on their own. And they are where they're at because they, they, they're comfortable in that. So it's gonna take time and, um, those teachers are still teaching and they, I still go into the classrooms and um, the students have, I feel like I've, I've kind of won the uh, students over because they're looking at me like, what is a real teacher? What does that mean? And, and so I just share my, share my education, share my story with them. And most of the time, <clears throat> Most of the time, when I say that I'm a survivor of Indian Day School, which was happening the same time as Indian Residential Schools, um, that really changes the perception that they have on survivors because they're they're always thinking that that was that happened a long time ago, and for me to be a survivor, it seems more real. Like they expect to see elders as as the ones who say that they are survivors and not someone like me that that looks young and couldn't possibly be um, in a place like that so uh, i you know my have i have an open door policy and a lot of teachers come into my room and have lunch with me because i eat lunch with my students all the time so um, and i just let them know and just said well if you if you need to ask questions um, we can go in my office 
that, you know, I don't want students to be overhearing, but if you just want to chat, then we'll just stay here with the students. So. Thank you, Rick. And you know, it's interesting that you say that because you don't have to be the voice of all indigenous people, you know, and that's what we do. Like, you know, I, when I was teaching uh, in a classroom, there were a couple of black kids and I had to really uh, folk, when I was mentioning a book or, or, or Black oppression or, or Martin Luther King Jr., as I do, because I always talk about human rights stuff, I had to make sure not to look at those kids and, and target them, like, you know what I mean, and, and, and go, right, you know, and without even realizing it, we'll do these things and then turn you, Rick, into the teacher, the Indigenous teacher for all teachers, you know, the Indigenous person teaching us all about Indigenous what it's like to be indigenous and that's not your role like you said so that's that's interesting and and when and sometimes we do make a mistake like maybe they would look at me and go oh as the one jew here why don't you represent all jews <laughs> it's like i don't think i can i'm only me you know but i can tell you a bit of things but that's really putting people on the spot and um I guess you consider that a bit reverse racism you know um in a way uh, what are some other other ways that you've succeeded in uh, opening these conversations with with students? If anybody wants to bring it up, and I know we're over time by three minutes, but maybe okay. Well, we'll stop in two minutes. Jenny's looking. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, it's just we have to open up the next room for the next presentation, and I have to bump bump everybody out here pretty quick. Okay. Okay. So, right. those two. Okay. Anyone else? Any other things to say? Maybe I can just speak quickly. Um, I work for an organization called Artists Inspire. So it's a lot of teaching artists who go into classrooms. And um, we try our best not to, like just to let people be who they are and represent who they are by doing their work in the classroom. And if there is, if there's a school that's known to have an issue around a certain area, then we can match them with an artist. Whether that artist addresses that directly, it's their business. Whether they want to just do what they do and be who they are, then that's what they do. But the, the point is really to just try to find the right match between the, the school and between the person who's coming in as a guest in order to make sure that, that you know, the students in the classroom can look at that person and go, wow, that person's really super awesome. They're really cool. And they have a direct personal experience with somebody from maybe a different um, cultural group than them. And in hopes that that will, you know, give them a, um, a more positive understanding of, um, you know, just what that person as an individual has to offer. Try That's to break down. That is a great, great way to, uh, to open people's minds. Uh, to, to building relationships equal now you know someone. That's a big difference. Tomiko, you wanted to say something quickly? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to... Um thank Rick for sharing his story and to acknowledge what happened to him was terrible and racist. I think even if it happened years ago, you still carry that. And it's important um, if somebody shares their story to acknowledge that that was something bad and it did happen and that we're working to make things better. And uh, your story helps us in that process as we can share it. Yes, and it's so hard because yes, like you said, you're carrying it with you. And uh, this is, and then unfortunately, when they're when you're young, you could carry it with you and actually form a belief about yourself, and be self-hating, and that is really really dangerous. So, um, listen, this 45 minutes is not enough time to to jump into this topic. Let's be clear, everybody. But please do use voices into action. Please attend. It will be lengthy and it will be an interesting conversation to prepare you for Asian History Month. It's happening next Thursday, um, at uh, 4 p.m. PST. And the link is in the thing that which was dropped in the chat, and it's also in this uh, course, this presentation's uh, thingy. Oh my God! I really thought I was articulate, not so much. Um, everybody, thank you for staying and being here, and I hope you got something out of this. I know I really got something out of the sharing that happened, and Rick, I really appreciate you sharing that, and it just makes me sick. And I wish I could punch those teachers in the face, but oh well. Um, that's how I go to write to a violent place, but you know, we gotta love, right? We gotta live and let live, I guess, and teach in our own way. And uh, Louise, the great idea on how to share, how to, how to get people to understand other people's culture by introducing them to people to begin with and their art, artistry. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you so much, Jody. We appreciate the time and energy. And although you had some difficulties, you did a great job sharing with us some really great things. I look forward to looking to Voices Into Action. And just a reminder to everybody that the demo slam and prize draw is today at 1.15. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.
everyone.